the program from Brazil, Dan Shrimp, a little bit, and Paul Way. Um, but it's nothing that can't be corrected, adjusted rather. If you were saying it's not corrections, it's adjustments. And painting is just a long series of adjustments. And um, so we have to go along with what the paint says to do. Um, so we put the paint on a little too thinly, as I say, it can, in certain areas, it can shrink kind of thing as it dries and you end up with little spots and patchy areas now here I need to be very careful and down there I need to be very careful there we are to be careful here as well because I had noticed with the red that I've missed some of the brown I didn't want to go into the brown with the red so I left it white and there we are that will do nicely thank you very much Again, I'm not too bothered about the raised areas. I'm more bothered about getting paint into the recessed areas. That is the part where we really want this paint. But we need to make sure that all of it is covered anyway, so we get a proper coverage and a uniform look. We put the um, Harley colours on. There we are. That's quite possibly the uh, a little bit more down here, I think. And that is spot on. And that will do nicely. Thank you very much. There we are. I don't think there's anywhere else I've missed now. There's a little white spot there. It just needs to be filled in. There we are. So that's what we have so far. Now the only thing really I can do at the moment is highlight the red trunks. Oops. So let's do that, shall we? We'll go into the Evil Sun Scarlet properly this time. And I'm using the Wazdaka Red in the same way as I'm using the um, Brown. And that is as an area to so the shadows um, I think it might have been a better idea to give this a wash but oh well let's see how we go with it it might look a little different. This is the actual colour of the trunks. So I'm going to add this as the majority colour here, but leaving any recessed areas. 
is the one stuck around. Now, yeah, I'm also not going into really shadowed areas. So I'm not going any further south than here. Now I'm not going really down underneath except to distinguish that part. In fact, I'm going to have to. All right. That will do. Now we can highlight that even further as time goes on. So we're going to start off with the base colour for the um, the flesh top, which will be the rhinox hide. Now I know there's not much of this left. I might need quite a bit of this, so <clears throat> there we are. That's that done. And that's there. Next off, we also need some paler brown, and that paler brown will be scrag brown. So we'll put some of this out as well. I'm going to put a fair amount of that down. And we'll see, we may need some more later, I don't know yet. <clears throat> and we also need a brush. And the brush I want to use is our new um, artistic number two round. So I'll give that a bit of a work damp dampening. Dry it off a little bit. We'll take some of the rhinox hide and into that we'll add the scrub brown. And we go. A little bit too much scrub brown in there, I think, for the time being. And again, what we're doing so far, let's push these out of the way. What we're doing here so far is the usual thing of um, picking out the high points. This is going to be the actual colour of the, um, of the fur. And what we're going to do is when we come around to doing more we'll add the fur texture with highlights hopefully
finish now. Def um, the back is done almost. And what I'm going to be doing now is just a few strands on his mane here. Um, now, this is quite a detailed mane. So what I'm going to be doing is running over these longer lengths of moulding um, just to make it look like it's fur just like this and as hopefully you can see what I'm doing um, once this bit is done I'm going to be doing a bit of a dry brush effects along these parts here um, and also along these parts here just to pick out the individual pieces of fur There we go. Now we are going to be having some paler areas. Not pale, I'm just going on this momentarily. And when I do this, it's going to be put on to mimic the fur. But before we paint the fur, we're going to go back to the trunks and the padding, the elbow and knee pads. So <clears throat> for that we're going to use a little bit of Gorgon Hide. Um, I'll put that down <coughs> on there like so. And then we'll just get a little bit one brush, we'll just get a little bit this on our brush and again we're going to be going along and adding this to any raised areas keeping the recesses obviously um, <clears throat> keeping them quite dark with the wash colour because that's what it's there for that's the whole reason we did the wash on this is to darken up those recesses because we knew this was going to be a white colour so we needed something darken the pale or darken the main parts of it there we go um <clears throat> so yes again is one of those steps that you don't want to be rushing even though it does seem a very easy job because the last thing you want to do now is to get some of this white onto the brown that we've just added or even worse get it on into the um, recesses on the actual skin of the uh, with the mini so we just need to take our time and try and make sure that this goes on anywhere that is raised um, 
but again it's not a highlight this is going to be the base color we will come, be coming back later to add highlights to this we'll not finish with this because it's uh it is quite um a pale color we do need Sorry, I was saying, because there's quite a bit of it on this one, it's very visible. Rather, we need to just give it the full works. It's not as if we can just subtly give it a dry brush and say that's it over and done with, like we have been able to with the other minis. Um, so what was I saying we're going to do with this all over these uh, pads And at first sight, the, especially with the ones on the knees, I think I mentioned it earlier on that uh, <clears throat> I wasn't sure whether it was actually knee pads or whether it was just uh, an error in moulding. But the fact that it's got the same sort of like thing on both knees, I'm uh, I'm going with the fact that it's knee pads and uh, elbow pads um, so we'll try to get these looking as white as we can <coughs> of points on this brush and we just had a dull put paint on it which is why we had to go back into it and tidy it up a little bit um, now there's not much room here for painting so don't worry if you do actually if you don't get the paint exactly on the um, all over the blue and you leave a little bit don't worry about it because as I said there's not much in the line of area to paint so near enough is good enough in this circumstance right so that's that brush used and we'll dry it off before putting the next colour out, which will be the highlight colour for the red, <clears throat> and that is Evil Sun Scarlet. <clears throat> um, so, let's put some of this out. Again, I'm using the wrong blooming brush to do this, but never mind. There's not much of this to put out anyway, so let's just get in there. Okay, so we're going over any raised areas once again, leaving any dips, dipped areas, no matter how slightly dipped, as being. A shadow. <clears throat> this is the colour. <clears throat> Again, I keep saying this, but I want to make sure that I've covered everything and I'm explaining myself properly. 
So we'll go through the steps that I'm using um, as a paint. This is what's going through my head all the time. So for the majority of the time as I'm painting, we will be using Oh, directly over the primer we'll be using a base coat more often than not with the base coat over the base coat I will put a wash I've chose not to do that on these except for the um, <coughs> except for the uh, pads The idea being, I just want to see how it works. You see how it looks if I don't use a wash. See if it's a more subtle colour. But the majority of the time, as I say, um, it'll be like a mid-tone colour that I will put on and then put a wash over it to darken it down, which goes into the recesses and gives us the shadow colours or shadow tone <clears throat> when that's when the wash is dried we will go over all the raised areas again with the um the base color to bring it back to that color because that's the color we want it to be and then after that we will either use a paler shade so in this case we're using a paler shade of red to go over the was Dacker red <clears throat> or we will mix in a paler colour <clears throat> in order to give highlights and the highlights we will do just on the raised area so we won't use it on any other area <clears throat> so that's the steps I will keep adding highlighted areas until we feel happy with how it's come out now happy with how it result is very very um, subjective with what I'm happy with you might want to go further you can highlight and highlight and highlight I usually stop after about two or three highlight stages <clears throat> I just like to get them ready for a tabletop not for display but you can go well beyond that you can do seven eight nine you can highlight right up to white if you wish <clears throat> I prefer just doing it like this because I'm just using it for tabletop games I'm not using it for anything other than that before we carry on <clears throat> I'm going to go back into the um, Gorgon Hide and I'm going to run the white or the Gorgon Hide into the eye sockets I will have to come back to that and add <clears throat> some more brown into the eye socket because I caught it with the white <clears throat> which I didn't want to do let's see if I can do that now before it goes any before I forget there we are so clear up the eye sockets because we're coming in with a different color <coughs> 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 